Hey guys, Mike here. In this video, we are pouring a 36 by 28 garage floor. And this is actually going to be a post and beam barn. And so that's why you see those big metal straps coming up out of the foundation. Those are going to be to fasten the, the big wooden beams he's got going on top of that wall. And he's also got four posts setting in the, in the middle of this floor. You can see what the, you can see the holes he's got dug for the footings for those beams and then the little matter rebar we put over it. Now we put down the, the poly vapor barrier, 6 mil poly vapor barrier and the wire in this. That's what the spec called for. So we're going to just pull that wire up as we go. The mix we're using today, we're using a 4000 PSI mix with, with microfiber in it. And we also got a little bit of accelerator in it. It's still a little chilly up here in Maine this time of year. But it's a pretty nice day out, so this stuff ought to dry pretty good for us today. We got two trucks. We got about 18 yards going in this thing. So we're gonna get this pulled out. We needed our little eight foot chute extension just to just to reach those back corners and the back wall, make it a little bit easier for us to pull the concrete around. We're gonna shoot wet pads in this too. If if you guys seen any of my other videos, you know we we shoot a lot of wet pads to get our grades in the center of these and that's what we screed off from so that's what we got the the laser level set up for that's a Topcon RL H5B laser that's the one I recommend for doing concrete work yeah, I got a link for that down in the description if you guys want to check that out that's a really nice laser level so the first thing we do I mean the key is you gotta get some concrete down to work with so we're getting most of this spread out. We'll, we'll actually probably dump all this first truck right out. That's generally what the three of us do. Now you don't have to do that. You can dump out just a small section, get that screeded if you want. But for us, the experience level we're at, we like to dump this right out. The concrete companies really like that too. They get their truck back, they can send them to another job. So they... Uh, they tend to give you pretty good service if you don't hold on to their trucks too long. So we try to get them dumped out and get them right back to them, you know, on most jobs that we do. You can see that slump we're pouring. We got about a six slump. That's generally a pretty normal slump for us. We also use a mid-range water reducer in all our mixes. So we're, we're allowed to pour a six slump like that without really affecting any of the strength. The water reducer helps make the, the concrete a little bit looser. So it's a little easier to work with, in my opinion. So we're going to get that shoot off. Just set it aside for now. Wait, keep that one for the second truck. And now we can we can just start dumping right out of the chute. We're going to have the driver get in the truck and just kind of pull forward as we as we dump it out until he's empty. I got the wire puller in my hand. You can see I'm tugging up on the wire as we go. Once you get some of that aggregate, the stone and the concrete under the wire, it the wire doesn't go all the way back down to the bottom, even if you walk on it. It stays up into the concrete. So that, with the fiber mesh in there, it's got plenty of reinforcement. Plus, you know, the floors that we pour inside these foundations, they're locked in. They're not going anywhere. So... The reinforcement's just an added insurance in case the sub base maybe wasn't compacted well enough. It could settle, I suppose, but most of the jobs we go on, we make sure the sub base is compacted really well. We even have a compactor that we'll bring if we think it needs to be compacted, so we'll just go over it before we pour. This floor is about an average of four to four and a half inches thick, which is pretty standard for us for a basic residential garage floor. Now you can see the process. We start from one side, move to the other. That way the the guy driving the truck really only needs to look in, you know, one mirror for my signal to tell him to move forward. I like working from right to left when I do that. So Luke's kind of breaking the concrete down, tuning it in, and Darren's magging 
the edges. He's mag floating the edges according to a chalk line. Right at the very beginning of the video, I think you saw us snap a chalk line on that, and that's what we're using for our exterior grade. The thing about pouring inside a foundation like this is you're pretty much wet screeding everything. You can't really ride the screed on any of the forms. I suppose we could right here at the doorways if we wanted to, but for the most part it's a little bit more difficult than just pouring on a concrete slab where all the forms are set right to grade. So here's Darren. He's going to set that wet pad in the middle. That receiver on that grade stick is set to the exact same height as those outside uh, magged edges that he magged earlier. So now we got a grade to go by in the middle and that's what we use to screed off from like that. We're using a 14 foot magnesium screed today. This this floor is level. We could have, you know, we could have power screeded this floor if we wanted to. Um, the guys, I just asked the guys what they wanted to do today. They said, ah, let's just hand screed this one. So that's why we decide just to hand screed this one. So that's the basic process. One guy's going by the outside pad, the other one's going by the middle pad, and you got one guy raking. My job is to make sure that concrete isn't low. If anything, them guys want it, you know, about an inch, inch or two high and they can just slowly pull it back now if it gets too high you know I pull it back just like that I don't want it to get too high on them but being low is is really the worst thing they don't want to have to stop if they don't need to you can see watch when, when they stop I don't see how I keep working so they're stopping for a reason and it's either because I got it too low or I, it's too high and I need to I need to correct that so they can continue to screed that's the job of a good puddler right there. So we always take turns screeding. That's one good thing about everybody being able to do everything. You know, you just, everybody can take turns. No one gets real tired. And it just makes the job go a heck of a lot easier. That second truck's backing in. You can see him. He's going to back in, get mixed up, and get ready to go. So by the time we get done screeding and bow floating, he should be about ready to stop pouring. You can see we got it a little bit high right there. Luke's really pulling a bunch out. That's why. I mean, two guys... Two guys would really work hard doing something like this with nobody raking in the middle. So having that third guy makes a whole world of difference when you're doing floors like this. The sun's really starting to pop up now. It's about 7 a.m. in the morning here. We generally always start first thing in the morning. We like starting when it's cool. We like starting when it's early. If you get the first round of trucks, you generally never have to wait. They're never late. They're always on time. That's a big deal. So we always schedule concrete for 6, 6.30 every single morning. And we have that scheduled for like two weeks in advance. So we just line up our jobs and, and hope the weather cooperates. If it doesn't, then we have to adjust from there. So there's the first truck. Get that dumped out. Got it bull floated. That, that took, you know, maybe... 15 20 minutes to get that first truck dumped out and screeded so now we're on to the second truck you can see I'm tugging the wire up Luke and Darren are spreading the concrete around getting it just as close as they can by eye they generally get it pretty close you know they've been doing Darren's doing it they're the guy on the left 26 years and you know Luke on the right's been doing it about 20 years Oh, them guys, they really know what they're doing. And no, they're not brothers, <laughs> in case you're wondering.
the drive here today for the concrete guys, it was about, they probably had a 30 minute drive. It wasn't too far. Sometimes a lot of the drives, the concrete companies, you know, we're an hour, hour and 15 minutes away. Concrete can get kind of hot on the drive to the job and uh, it starts setting up on you a little bit as you're pouring it sometimes. Today we didn't really have too much trouble with that. It felt pretty cool. But when you feel it starting to set up on you before you've even got it screeded, that's when you know you really got to start hustling because you got just a matter of minutes, you know, to really to get it down. So Luke's finishing up getting those edges magged right there. Again, he's magging to a chalk line. Even that that little skill in itself takes a little practice to make sure you get it nice and level. You don't want that that outside pad wavy at all. You don't want it low, you don't want it high. It's got to be right perfect with the chalk line. The best way to really practice that is to mag right on top of a form like this just to get the feel of the concrete to see how it feels how it flattens out as you move the mag back and forth you really want a nice smooth surface to screed off from Luke's got a admirer there you can see he's got a little admirer now kick screeding like we're doing you know Screeding the concrete while we're moving backwards and kicking the concrete up and filling our footprints. That's that takes a little bit of practice too. The best way to practice that is to do it while you're screeding on top of a wood form. That way you can get the motion of the of your feet, you know, your kicking part down as you're screeding and not really have to worry about the end of your screed if you're digging in or, or leaving it high or not, because you're riding right on top of the form. So that's how we try to teach new people how to screed like we do. We don't typically screed just one guy on the screed. A lot I know a lot of other people do, but we don't typically do that. We just find it easier if one if one person grabs the end of the screed and then we both just get it pulled down. We're going to get that, that last bay filled in. Then we'll bring this one side down. And, you know, we're working on, you know, we're probably 30 minutes into the pour by now. We know three guys. So that's, that's really not too bad. You know, we're not trying to race or anything like that. We're just trying to get it down as, as fast as we can without killing ourselves, basically. Because when you do this every single day, you know, it is hard work. You don't want to kill yourself. But you don't want to wait too long to get it down either. You know, you've got, you've got a window of time to get this stuff down before it starts setting on you. And you want to get it down before that, that's for sure. You can see I'm a little high there on my outside. So Luke's going to come over and he's going to try to grab that here at some point, I would think. That's... That's generally what we try to do is keep the outside, you can see he grabbed it, as close to grade as we can. Even if the middle of the screed is filling up a little bit high, it's the outside part that's really critical. You've got to have that perfect. And you can see as I'm screeding down that form, you can see the mark the screed is leaving on top of the surface. That's perfect right there. I'm not digging in. I'm not riding high. You can tell I'm scoring every time I... I bring that down, I'm scoring, which means that section of the floor right there is perfectly flat with the outside pad. I got my little bull float trick going over there. I put a little bit of concrete on each end to weight it down just to make the bull floating a little bit faster. That bull float's really light, so... You know, we want to get this bow floated, bring up the paste and the cream, get that surface nice and smooth. So just adding a little bit of weight to it like that makes it a little easier to bow float, actually. Especially, you know, if you do find the concrete setting on you just a little bit. 
you could put even a little bit more weight on it if you wanted to. You can see how smooth that leaves it when you run that bow float over it back and forth. And now that's going to make it a nice easy surface to power trial later on as the guys let this set up for a while, put the power trial on it. When it's bow floated really smooth, it makes the power trial on that much easier. If you guys want more advanced training like this, learning how to pour and finish concrete, you know, I got my private training area, the concrete underground. That's the place to be. There's all kinds of private trainings in there where I go. A lot more into detail about how to do this stuff plus you get access to me in there for asking questions so I would check that out if you're looking for something like that looking to learn more advance your skills the concrete underground is the place you want to be you can see how nice and flat that floor is as you run as I run that bull float over it no there's no hit uh, dips in there no humps that thing rides nice and flat all I got to do is just smooth it out so guys if if this is your first time watching me and you like this kind of stuff you know please go down there and hit subscribe if you like these kind of videos smash that like button for me and if you want more advanced training you know check out the concrete underground but uh, I appreciate you watching. Thanks. Come on back, and we'll see you on the next one, guys.